Hello everyone. Back out here today. We're gonna work on the Clark Dozer here just a little bit. See if we can't get it started. I'm gonna take that carburetor off right there. And I'm gonna take my bore snake and I'm gonna run it up through here and look up inside this intake manifold here. See if there's anything in there that's blocking it. Whenever I turn it over, I don't get any vacuum pulling through the carburetor. I pulled all the plugs out. I run a compression test and I got compression. I took this carburetor off a few months ago, went and rebuilt it. And it was off there for probably a good two weeks, maybe, maybe three and i don't know if maybe a mouse or some wasps or something got up in here and did something to plug it up but today i'm just going to take that carburetor off i'm going to look up in there and i'm going to see so i'm going to stick you guys right over here so you can see what's going on it shouldn't take but just a few minutes i already pulled this linkage faster out so we can get the governor linkage out of the way and then we got to take the linkage for the choke cable off it's a pretty easy setup little compact working conditions yep I can't get the screwdriver bit that I need See if that's loose enough. Yep. Slid right out. Yeah, I didn't bring a screwdriver for this. We'll see if we can get it with this tool. This is a temporary fuel line that I put on here. It goes to a little gas tank. Yep. Heat just kicked on. A little bit of gas run out. I got a drain pan down underneath there to catch anything that comes out. The reason why I took this manifold off, I don't know if you guys can see it there on camera or not, 
there was a crack in it right here and I took that off welded it up ground it off a little bit so it looked better The old wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour outside there today. I got the big door up on the shop so you can kind of hear the plastic blow around there a little bit on the old heater hauser here that I got. Old bolt over there just not gonna give it up today. Always gotta be that one. Now I have to go see if I can find a new carb gasket. This one's all come apart. That was a new gasket too. It hasn't even been run since I put it on there. I think I got some new carb gaskets over there in my stockpile. Man, that's really stuck up on there. Yeah. I'll have to clean that up later for the time being. We'll get the old bore scope out here. Some people call it a bore, bore scope. Some people call it a snake cam. Some people call it an endoscope. Get it all put together here. see but I'm gonna take a look you got a little light on there
don't see anything. Yep, couldn't get that lucky. Nothing in the carburetor either. Well, that only leaves me with one option. Let's see if we can get these valve covers off here. Give me just a minute, I'm gonna get him gonna get my driver. screwdriver Well, this is not a very good place to work.
it would appear that all those valves are free. Let's check this side out. Well, it appears all the valves are free. So, I guess I'll take the manifold off and see if I can see anything there. This manifold is a bear to get off to. Check all the little washers. Not too worried about the studs breaking off because, like I said, I've had this manifold off before. When I did the welding on it. We got two more here. They're just a pain in the hind end to get. Get you guys up here out of the way so I don't knock you off.
Well, that one there's tight. Yep. There goes a washer. Be gone forever. tear them up them are brand new oh you can't tell by looking at it I don't know what all the spots are from this for giggles Take a look up in here. open that one appears to be open
Don't see any obstructions. I don't know. I'm not seeing anything, folks. <clears throat> Just doesn't doesn't make any sense to me. Lifters are free. Valves are free. Knock the battery up and roll the motor over. Let's see, how am I going to reach that? folks I got vacuum <clears throat> I 
I got good vacuum on these two. And I got good exhaust on these four. For some reason, it's not drawn through the manifold. Let's see, I need to check. Yeah, it stopped right there in that same place. I'm not quite sure what to think about this. I think I'm going to go get some of that uh, sealant, put on those gaskets. Maybe I'm leaking around these gaskets. I need to go get my I'm getting ready to say I'm gonna go, go I'm gonna go get my my die grinder, put one of them Scotch bright pads on there, clean that manifold up again. Maybe I'm just not getting a good seal against the head. Let me go, let me go get my tools. I'll work on that a little bit. And then I'll show you where we're at once I get done cleaning everything up. I don't think I got any more sealant. I don't think I got any of that copper coat. So it might be a day or two before I get any of that. So let me get this cleaned up, work on it a little bit. And then I'll show you where we're at. All right, everybody, we're back out here working on the old dozer today. I think when I left off there, I was talking about cleaning up all the surfaces to put new gaskets and sealer and everything on. That was a little over a week ago. Been pretty busy this week. Um, before we get started on all that, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and take some compression readings again. Kind of start back at the beginning before I go and put everything back together again. Uh, since I've already got most of everything tore off the one side of the engine, instead of uh, putting it all back together, just have to tear it back off again. I'm gonna go ahead and do some compression readings. I've already got the number four cylinder pulled. And I've already got the gauge going here. The only bad thing about this is I can't reach the starter from here. And I bought one of those fancy buttons to hook up over here. And for whatever reason it don't work. So Let's see here, get things readjusted where you guys can see what's going on. I'll let you guys stay out here and watch.
about 60 pounds and I don't know if that's good or not I've got a shop manual over here it gives me all kinds of information but the one thing it doesn't tell me is what the compression is supposed to be so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna check all the rest of these and see how close they are to one another and then I'm gonna go in there and get on the gunculator and see what the interweb see if I can find anything on the interweb as to what the compression on these should be go ahead I'll let you guys watch one more here and then I'll Turn you off so I don't bore you. Yeah. My hose isn't going to cooperate and let you see what it says. Yeah, let's see what it does. Well, that one says 60 pounds too. Kind of seems to be the going trend here. All right, let me finish the rest of these and then I'll come back and tell you what I found out. All right, I got to thinking about what I just did. When you do a compression test, you're supposed to pull all the spark plugs out, not just one at a time. I know some of you were probably looking at that, yelling at me saying, you idiot. But I remembered so I'm back. We're going to try to do it the right way now. I have pulled all four spark plugs now. I've got the compression tester in there. And let's wheel her over this time and see what it does. All right. You have to forgive me for that. It's been a long time since I've done this. And I just wasn't thinking. Let's see what this does. Well, that really didn't change much. It got up to about 65 pounds. go up here to number two
Yeah, that one's about 62 pounds. Unfortunately, that didn't change much. <clears throat> that didn't change a whole lot, folks. The other thing is when you do these compression tests, I think the engine is supposed to be warm. And since I can't get it started and running, I don't really have a way of getting it warmed up. I'm going to assume, and I know I shouldn't do that. <clears throat> You've seen what's happened on some of the other videos when we assume things. I'm going to assume that since it's not warmed up I'm probably going to be at about the bare minimum um, what I did find in there on the internet I did go in there and look on the internet and what I did find out was that new these engines start off at about 130 pounds and 70 is really about the bare minimum and i mean the bare minimum um, they're claiming that you know around 90 pounds is about ideal once it starts getting below 90 you should really start thinking about doing something that at 70 pounds it should at least start and run and still be okay and anything less than that is junk. So at this particular point in time, I'm going to have to decide what I want to do. I'm going to assume that I'm at bare minimum. I don't know if it's rings or if it's valves. So instead of reassembling this engine, I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to pull the head on this and then I'm going to check and see what kind of condition the valves are in. Uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm at. So I think I'm probably going to end this video right here. I try to keep these videos kind of short. Uh, that way uh, people don't lose interest in them and yet I can still show a little more detail about what I'm doing. So if you want to see how this project ends up, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.